Okay, so welcome to today's class. Today we're going to talk about the ladders safety. Scaffold and ladders safety training. So this is what scaffold looks like. We're going to take, talk about that next time we see each other. And uh, today we're going to talk about the ladders. All right, so come on, work with me. There we go. Well, same picture. All right, let's take a look at some of the statistics. And of course, even though they are not up to date, for the most part, they basically they keep repeating because history repeats itself. So there's awareness here. So here's the pie chart of the fatalities, which means accidents that have caused death uh, by the event exposure in residential construction. And here is the 2003-2006 study by right here. There's that link if you want to go and look up further statistics. All right, so fires and explosion, uh, fires and explosions. We have about two percent of deaths in the residential construction. Then we have assaults and violent acts, about three percent. Transportation accidents, well, we're going up 14%. Let's go exposure to harmful substances or environments. That's about 18% of the fatalities. Contact with objects and equipment, 18%. And falls, about 40% of the whole fatalities in construction is caused by falls. Now, the next slide is just talking about the falls. So then we're going to take this pie, this piece of the spy chart and we're going to analyze that, what kind of falls we're talking about. All right, so the falls, fa fall fatalities, fatalities, in residential construction. Falls from stairs or steps, about six. Falls from the same level, about seven. You see, you're going to participate in safety training every time you enter a new construction site. If there is a project they're going to do and they're going to participate in certain type of or going to work on certain type of construction site first day you walk in there you're going to have to go through safety training by the officer designated for that construction site and sometimes you're going to get a I don't want to say it, a trick question, but it's something like that. And at the end of the training that officer might ask you okay so how high do you have to be? to be injured if you fall? Well, the answer is, you don't have to be high at all. You can be standing on the ground or sitting in a chair and you fell a certain way, hit your head a certain way on some certain object, whatever, you can, you can be hurt uh, quite badly to the point that you know, it can cause death. Right? So that's here, from, from stairs or steps or even from the same level, so like even more than, you know, all right, falls from unspecified, other unspecified falls, about seven. Uh, fall from building grinders or other structural steel. Well, numbers are going up a little bit, right? From, falls from non-moving vehicles. Falls from floor, dock, or ground level. 47%. No, 47 instances. Uh, falls to a lower level, unspecified or, uh, or not elsewhere classified, so other type of falls. Falls from scaffolds. Hmm? Staging. Fall from scaffold staging. Look at that, 89 instances. Here's the thing, falls from ladders, 135 instances. 
you're talking here look at this word fatalities these are the accidents that people have actually died all right and the biggest one is falls on the roof now we are not talking about in, in, in our class uh, well, the work that we are involved with very rarely you're going to deal with working on a roof however sometimes in order to run certain type of wires in certain places yes it might have to uh, deal with being on the roof so you know what why not uh, kind of at least be aware of things because the more you know the safer you are all right ladders stairway safety this picture just keeps, keeps coming here here's the bird all right let's take a look at some of the common ladder hazards we'll talk about this a little bit more in further slides overreaching when working from a ladder if you need to if you can't reach something calm down reposition the ladder reclimb this ladder mm. we have a dog here and the dog sheds and i just keep getting the dog hair in my face <laughs> i think the weather is changing spring is around the corner uh, all right so here is overreaching so that's one thing we're talking about common ladder hazards standing on the top two steps of a step ladder we're not supposed to be standing on the top two steps if you look at the step ladder a step ladder we're, talk, we're going to talk about the anatomy of a step ladder it's basically like a inverted v shape this very top here that's the top step and then the one below is the one below it right we're not supposed to be standing on these two so the thing from the top the peak so it'll be one two third one down then you can stand on that not securing the ladder correctly self-explanatory portable ladders not three feet above the landing surface what is a landing surface if you need to get yourself from the ground level to the for example to the roof or whatever the surface is you're going to walk up this we're going to walk up the ladder and you're going to get yourself on top of a roof that top of the roof that's your landing surface and what happened we're going to talk about this a little bit later the portable ladder has to be extend three feet above the landing surface so you have something to grab onto when you're stepping on it <clears throat> so that would be the common ladder hazards and of course is otherwise improper setup all right here's the bird again here's the anatomy of a typical step ladder here we have the top cap and then we have the step above that that is not a step so these two are could be called steps but they're not to be stepped on so you can step you can be standing on this step in this one here you can be standing on this step and this is as far as you are legal to be stepping on you're not supposed to be standing on here and definitely you're not supposed to be standing on here this over here is called a pale shelf uh, well if you're a painter you can put other things you're not supposed to be standing on that this is not designed to by any means it's not designed to hold your weight please do not even put that to the test here are the rails all right so here's the rear rear rail and here's the front rail the rails here's the front foot or the fruit foot fruit front foot and the foot padding and here is the spreader assembly which is supposed to be intact all right it's supposed to be fully extended and locked into position when you when you are using step ladder and here would be otherwise braces 
to basically keep the physical integrity of this whole constructed object. Right? So here is the anatomy of a stepladder. And this thing here folds onto itself just like that and can open. And this is how we use the stepladder. Well, for the most part, there's a little bit more. All right, choosing the right ladder before stepping onto a ladder. Think about these things. Think hard about them. Duty rating of the ladder. What capacity can it hold? A ladder is not equal to another ladder. Uh, somebody said loud and clear. Okay, probably when I was doing the mic test. Sorry, I just looked at the chat line here. Um, all right, so duty rating. Before you step on it, make sure that the ladder is designed for this type of job. What kind of a duty rating it has? We'll talk about that in the next few, few slides here. <laughs> yeah, I'll get to that. The question is, is physical fitness ability a factor? Uh, yeah, let's let me. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll get to that. All right. Height of the ladder is the ladder too short or is it too tall? Hmm? Condition of the ladder and instructions unique to the ladder selected. This is one of those slides that. You're going to go through it once, and some of the slides are going to make more sense than others at this point. But if you go through the whole slide and then you go back, then if you read those some of those slides again, they're going to make more sense. It's that type of a presentation. Here. All right, here's the duty ladder rating, proper duty rating and or capacity here. All right. And these are all the stickers on the ladders. Here are the type of the ladders. Here's type 3, type 2, type 1, and then it's 1A and 1AA. Oh, look at that. Here is the lowest on the totem pole. It's a light duty household ladder. If you want to just have that thing tucked away in the garage or a basement and once in the blue moon you're going to reach that extension cord that you have stored above you know somewhere and uh, or if you need to change the light bulb or something like that and then you're just going to put it back so it's not going to get a heavy use. And it is supposed to, so here's your, uh, <laughs> here's the answer to some of the questions I was getting at it, right? So, it is supposed to handle 200 pounds. So, today, it just so happens that I can't use that ladder. Here's your answer. <laughs> then here's type 2, medium duty. You can use that in a commercial. It's more solid has more solid construction which means you take you can take a lot of uh, more physical abuse and the difference between a commercial use and the household use is that in commercial you can just you're just going to use it a little bit more more on a regular basis and that thing is supposed to handle 225 pounds and I'll have to check if I can use that ladder today or not. Here's another answer to your question. <laughs> Here's type 1, heavy duty for industrial use. Those ladders, see the light duty is going to be the lightest one to carry. This one here, medium duty, it's going to be not as light, but it's not as heavy as the heavy duty one. So it's heavier to carry. Things are heavier to carry. However, if you get a light duty and you use it in, try to use it in a, like on the construction site, that thing is almost going to pretty much dissolve in your hands after about two days. Because that thing is, well, not two days, but, uh, you know, um, it's going, you're going to be shopping for a new ladder quite quite soon. 
but it's going to be easier to carry. This one here is a little bit heavier to carry, but it is going to last longer and it's going to support you longer. And the thing about life is that as opposed to the video games, we don't have another credit to put in and start over. So just keep that in mind. Uh, um, and then there's that heavy duty industrial one, a little bit heavier, more ragged construction. It can take a lot more physical abuse. You can take it and drag it around construction sites and uh, you can use it. It's supposed to withstand 250 pounds. I should be okay to use that ladder. <laughs> All right. Then here's extra heavy duty industrial is rated for 300 pounds. And there is that double A special duty rugged is supposed to withstand 375 pounds. So here is the rating, the duty rating and capacity of the ladder. Select a ladder with the proper duty rating for your weight and the materials that you're going to be handling. So it's not just you that is climbing the ladder. What are you going to do? Climb the ladder to see what's what over the, you know, over the tree or something like that? Uh, there's a reason why you're climbing the ladder. Sometimes, and sometimes you're going to have to carry something up the ladder, and you're supposed to do it a certain way. You can't just. Uh, well, we'll get to that. All right, and this is what the stickers look like. And I apologize for the blown-up version of this thing, but uh, for the most part, you're going to see what uh, you know. Here's the star performance according to whatever stars rating, and here is uh, okay. So here's the step ladder ID label, and here's the extension ladder ID label. All right, uh, we're going to take a look at what the differences are. We already know what step ladder looks like, and we're going to take a look at what extension ladder is. Uh, okay, so here's the rating, load capacity, duty rating. So that would be the this thing here, right here. Okay. Uh, so then the ladder size. So there's this one is uh, this one here's six foot ladder step ladder, and over here this one here's a 24 foot extension ladder. All right, maximum reach, that's based on average person's height. Uh, um, you can, an average person with average person's height can reach about 10 feet above the ground comfortably. And that's an average arbitrary number. And over here with extension ladder, 23 feet. Look at that, see that? This one has more because you're going to step on the third last step and plus your own height and the reach of your hands. Yeah, I can reach up to 10 feet above the ground. And over here, you're going to stand on the third last step or no, hold on, you're going to stand on the third last step. You're supposed to, but it's supposed to extend three feet above the landing surface. So that uh, here's a little bit, uh, yeah. Uh, all right, uh, here's the highest standing level. That's where your feet would be. All right, and there's the model ID number and the and other, um, other things that have to do with cataloging, selling, and all that stuff. So you're going to look for those stickers on those ladders. All right, extension ladder. See, now that's what extension ladder looks like. Here's the main frame section. And over here is the flight section. And they slide. And they do it in a certain way. And look, here is the ground level. Here's the ladder at a certain pitch, which means an angle. And here is the landing surface on top of that roof, or whatever the construction is. And look, one, two, three on the average those rungs those are horizontal things that you step on they are spaced about one foot apart so you can you can count those and see how long the ladder is anatomy of the extension ladder here's a fly section that's the one on top And here is the mainframe or base section. 
and on top of that is the slide rail and here is a rope pulley system and these over here are called rung locks what happens is that you pitch the ladder put it under an angle and you pull on this rope so this rope is threaded around this pulley here and comes back and it's tied to the fly section of that so when you pull down it goes around and it is going to pull this fly section up and those rung locks are going to click every time they pass uh, through another section of the rungs and that's how you lock that in position and over here you have the anti-slip safety shoes or feet which are supposed to be put one way or another sometimes depending on the situation so that's the anatomy of the extension ladder proper ladder setup well consider the placement and pitch of the ladder well placement or well placement would be a step ladder and an extension ladder or Here's something that I'm going to mention, a straight ladder. A straight ladder is just like an extension ladder, but it's not an extension ladder. It's just one section of it, just one single section. Probably one of the first ladders that was invented. Right? Pitch is the angle. It is important. You can have it too close to the face of the object which is going to make it so that if you start climbing and there are your own way you can pull the ladder back with you and you can fall backwards if it's too close or you can have it too far so if you start climbing that your weight is going to push it down and it's going to fall this way so you should have a proper pitch of ladder and we're going to talk about that secure and stabilize the ladder ladder should be stable so once you are climbing on the bottom this thing is not going to slip and I have a little short story I'm going to tell you but I you know what I'm going to tell you that when we see each other in person um, and uh, stabilize and secure well so securing it would be maybe tying it at the top to some sort of a sturdy construction piece so it doesn't slide back, uh, slide uh, sideways, or well, it's not going to be detached from whatever the thing. And once you're up in the air, there, uh, well, you have a different way of thinking when you're coming down. Uh, so make sure it doesn't happen. The pitch, pitch is the angle of the ladder. Extension ladders or straight ladders. For the matter of fact, uh, extension ladders should be used at a four to one pitch. All right, so let's see what does that what does this mean? For every four feet in height, the bottom of the ladder should be one foot away from the surface. So, for example, if it's a 20 foot height divided by four, it should be five feet away. If this is, well, 12 divided by four, it will be three feet here. So this is a 12 feet height right here. This should be three feet away. And that's a proper setup. It gives you the proper opti optimal balance. So when you're climbing on this thing, if it will be too close, you will under your own weight and when you start climbing there's a there will be, you'll be running the risk of pulling the ladder with you backwards or if you have that thing pitched too low uh, you're not going to have enough grip in a, um, at this point and you can actually push the ladder down and it's going to fall with you you're going to fall onto it pitch four to one is that going to be on the test? Am I going to ask you? Yes, I will. Yeah. All right. Proper height extension ladders. Proper height extension ladders. When accessing another level of the ladder, sorry, when accessing another level, the ladder must extend at least three feet 
or 0 0.9 meters above the landing to provide a handhold for getting on and off the ladder. One, so from here, one, two, three, and a little bit here, right? Because it's also a little pitch. So over here, you're going to have three feet height. You just count the rungs. The rungs are spaced one foot apart. Easy. This way, when you're getting on and off the ladder, you have relatively safe environment. Now, there's no guarantees. You still have to be aware of things. And you have to be conscious of things. But that will be the safe way of setting things up. Secure and stabilize ladders. Continuing. Extension ladders should be secured at the top or bottom to prevent the movement. That's what it says here, but I'm going to tell you this. Please scratch that or and make it and. All right? It should be secured at top and the bottom to prevent movement. The base of an extension ladder must be secured in place by using the safety feet on the ladder or other effective means. Common sense. Make sure that this, see this, that's your life that's online. Right? Make sure things don't slip and you're going to find yourself in all kinds of different situations. Right. Here's an example of securing the ladder on the top. You can also secure it to about here, if you can. Every situation is different. Oh, look at this. Here, this guy is securing this thing right to the building. Secure and stabilize ladders on the bottom. Ladders should be prevented from slipping. Do what you can to properly secure the ladder. If it's a, if it's a soft surface, you should have enough and adequate. You should have adequate hard surface to put that on. And sometimes you can put things on so, and some things you shouldn't. Like don't use bricks to secure that. Use common sense. Make sure the ladder doesn't slip. Here's an example of securing the ladder on the bottom. Here's also an example of securing the ladder on the bottom when you have a sandy kind of a bottom. Those feet, see, they're retracted. Right? And here's another way that there's a spike driven there. Additional support. Secure and stabilize ladders continuing. Here's an example of securing, having an extra, well, kind of assurance on the top, which would be the extend, using the extenders to, well, that gives you a little bit more of the center of gravity play when you're using the ladder. And you will see what I mean. Here's a foot extension. When that happens, don't just put some couple of bricks or something like that. And if somebody tells you to that, just go home. Not worth it. There are certain things that are made for certain things. Use those. Here's a stabilizer. Here's a foot extension. All right. When it comes to step ladders. Here's what a step ladder looks like again. Step ladders use only in fully extended position. Fully open position, it says here. Fully open position, those things extended and locked, and make sure that they're not damaged, those uh, cross braces here. Do not use a step ladder that is folded or in a leaning position. Sometimes you're going to see some people just folding the step ladder and leaning it against the wall and using it almost like a straight ladder. Well, now, 
I'll tell you, don't do that. Never sit or stand on the top two rungs. Self-explanatory. Consider work height when selecting a stepladder. Maintain a safe position of the ladders. Face the ladder when ascending or descending or climbing you know, or coming down of it. Face the ladder. Do not go just like backwards and just go like, you know, this here and just like using the stairs. Now, if a safety officer that is making his or her rounds on the construction site, when they see you do that, you're going to be sent home. There you go, play some video games, right? We'll tell you, tell you the boss what we did. We'll send you home to play some video games. Your boss is going to be very happy. Plus, it's dangerous to do that. Maintain three points of contact at all times. I'm not uh, kind of like an alpinist, but that's, I heard that this is one of the basic things when climbing mountains or for the climbers or rock climbers, not rock climbers, yeah, maybe. Um, Three point, you have two hands and you got two feet. Make sure that at a given point of time, three of those are in contact with the ladder. So just use one limb to detach yourself from the ladder, reposition, and just, you know, it's, it kind of feels weird, weird at the beginning, but you get used to it. You feel like a spider. Keep your body centered on the ladder. Never let your belt buckle pass either side rail. Here, let me just fire something up here. You're gonna get me aboard. Give me a chance to uh, lubricate my throat with some cold coffee. New file, I'm just sending up my board here. Ah, that should do. Create. And I'm going to bring this thing here and zoom in a little bit. Change the color of my pen a little bit here. should do and let me choose a pen all right there. okay let's say we have an object and this is probably your science or physics class from your high school or uh, such let's see we have an object There we go. Center of gravity of this object would be somewhere here. Okay. So if we hang that center of gravity on a string, it is going to hang here. Well, what happens? Um, oops. Come on. There you go, let me grab the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. There we go. I'm going to put that aside. All right. What happens if we tilt that? object a little bit maybe this way here huh? and the center of gravity is going to hang about here well if you draw a straight line and if it's still within the base Here's the base of the object. 
if it's still within the base, sorry for that microphone here, you are not going to tip. If you tilt it enough, hey, here goes my drawing skills. That the center of gravity leaves the shadow of the base. Here's the base, here's the shadow of the base coming from down, from up. Then guarantee you that this is going to tip. So here is the physics 101. Here, right? So that's a never let the belt buckle pass either side rail. It just so happens that if you are climbing the rail, you're on it. For the most part, uh, your center of gravity is going to be your belt buckle. That's where your belt buckle is. So it's that's why they said that. It's easier easy to remember. If your belt buckle leaves the air, so if you're trying to overreach somewhere, uh, plus, you know, this is not a roll, the belt buckle, right? Because what are you going to do? You take your belt off and hang it on the on the, on the the ladder so you can overreach? Pfft, that would be silly, right? Um, but it has to do with the center of gravity. You are going to tip. You're going to fall if you let the center of gravity of the whole system, because the system consists of the ladder and you, not just you. So you have to consider the weight of the ladder and all that stuff. And the higher you are, the more prone to falling you are, because you're creating different uh, angles and things. Right? Uh, and the higher you are, the harder you fall. <laughs> right? So that what it means to never let the belt buckle pass either side of the rail. Maintaining a safe position on the ladder continued. So here's a person. He's got a tool belt. He is maintaining, well, three points of one. Now here, one, two, three, and four point contacts with the ladder right now. And look at that. Here's three feet above, and there is one to four pitch. That looks like what it is. Yeah, it looks like this guy is safe. Now, here is another last thing I'm going to leave you with. Is that the last slide? Yes, that's the last slide. When it comes to electrical situations that have to do with electricity, just think about that. Aluminum ladders are made out of aluminum, and aluminum is metal, and metal is a conductor. Here's an electrical panel that has to do with wiring and all that stuff. Just think of some things like this when you are choosing the specific ladder for a specific task. Uh, right now we have something that's called fiberglass and those fiberglass ladders, they will be lightly heavier. Well, lightly heavier. <laughs> they will be slightly heavier or they will be significantly heavier to carry than the aluminum ladders. But how much is your life worth? And I don't want to kind of give you the degree on how important life is because then I'll have to become a philosopher, but you know what I mean. Right? So here's something else to consider when choosing a ladder. Use the fiberglass over the aluminum when dealing with electricity. It just gives you that little extra, extra kind of um, grasp on safety. All right. Okay, so this is uh, the lecture about the ladders that I'm going to give you, and I will see you next time, and we're going to talk about the safety aspects that, uh, the safety considerations that have to do with the scaffolds. Touch on physics, I just did. <laughs> Remember when I said I could use that ladder, but I couldn't use the other ladder? Physical ability. <laughs> oh, yeah, there we go. And I'm not going to go any further with that one. Okay, cool. All right, guys. Um, have a nice, enjoyable, and safe weekend. It is not almost Friday today. It is Friday today. So I'll see you when I see you. Thank you very much.